Hello, good afternoon. This is the All24 News and this is our main headlines. <clears throat> the United Nations expressed concern about isolating African nations over a Macron variant while African President Cyril Ramaphosa called for easing restriction. In Marco deferred an initial judgment in the trial of the post leader Aung San Suu to December. Starting from today, the 30th of November, Barbados has completed its transition to a republican system by launching the independence from Britain. Hello again and welcome. Starting from the Algerian Minister of Health took part in special session of the World Health Organization. Mr. Ben Bouzi delivered a speech on the health challenges confronting the African continent and expected role of the WHO in facing the COVID-19 pandemic. The Minister of Health called on international community to implement the process in question according to integrated and progressive approach, taking into account the lessons learned from corona pandemic before reaching a final result providing for modification of current parameters in the prevention, parabolin, and response to epimedics. To a different story now, as cases of the new Omicron variant emerge around the world, many countries are imposing travel bans of increasing quarantine requirements. Zara Ferjani on what follow will explain. The health officials have stated that the new Omicron coronavirus variant has shown the pandemic is far from over. Despite only being tracked for the past five days, the virus has already been found to have 30 different mutations. The mutations contain features seen in all of the other variants, but also traits that have not been seen before. And the mutations um, show evidence of uh, increased transmissibility, uh, increased infectivity, and also evidence that it could evade the immune response and also the um, uh, treatment uh, with monoclonal antibodies such as Ronaprev. All those are very concerning. It is too early to say vaccines protect people against Omicron. Work is underway to see whether the new variant may be causing new infection in people who have already had coronavirus or whether waning immunity may be playing a role. It, it, it's the mutations that again tell us that it has differences that are there. However, the vaccine is not an all or nothing. And I think it's really important, even more important now that people come out and get their booster doses because having high levels of um, immune response from the booster dose is the one thing that will help overcome this sort of variation. The vaccine um, in, in, the introduces not only antibodies in our system, but also introduces T cell responses, which are very broad. And so while I think this may reduce the effectiveness of vaccine compared to other variants, I don't think it will mean the vaccine won't work completely. But what it does mean that, you know, boosters become even more important right now. So far, cases of the variant have appeared primarily in young people, leaving them exhausted and with body aches and soreness. Pfizer BioNTech, which has produced a vaccine against COVID-19, is already studying a new variant's ability to evade vaccines. The United Nations expressed concern about isolating African nations of a Macron variant, while African President Cyril Ramaphosa called for easing the restriction on his country. On Monday, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres raised alarm about the potential consequences of travel restrictions imposed on countries in southern Africa by several governments in order to prevent the spread of the new corona variant Omicron. Guterres said in a statement, I am now deeply concerned about the isolation of southern African countries due to the new COVID-19 travel restrictions. While appreciating South Africa for rapidly detecting and reporting the new variant's development, the UN chief stated the people of Africa cannot be blamed for the low level of vaccinations and they should not be penalized for identifying and sharing crucial science and health information with the world. The latter encouraged higher levels of testing for travelers along with other appropriate and truly effective measures instead. Jacob Zuma, South Africa's ex-president, has called for the easing of the Omicron travel bans. 
The current president of South Africa criticized travel bans imposed on his country and its neighbors as a result of the new Omicron variant. Cyril Ramaphosa expressed his disappointment with the decision, which he described as arbitrary, and demanded that the prohibitions be lifted immediately. We need to resist unjustified as well as unscientific travel restrictions that only serve to further disadvantage developing economies. We have seen how some countries have started restricting travel to other countries, thus damaging their economies and particularly sectors of their economies that rely on the travel of people around the world. The United Kingdom, the European Union, the United States and Japan are among the countries that have enforced travel bans. Civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi, who was arrested and arrested following a military coup on February 1st, is accused of inciting public unrest and faces other charges. Myanmar court deferred an initial judgment in the trial of the deposed leader to December 6, Tuesday. The charge against her including incitement against the ruling military and breaking COVID-19 protocols. The former Nobel laureate also faces several other charges that could see her detained for the rest of her life if convicted. The Chinese president stated on Monday that China will provide another 1 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccination to African countries in order to prevent the spread of the new variants. This action would encourage Chinese enterprises to invest in Africa over the next three years. More details with our Islam. China has offered a billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine to African countries. This comes as part of a forum between China and African states with an emphasis on trade and security, which could be a move to encourage Chinese companies to invest at least $10 billion in Africa over the next three years. The pledge of additional vaccine doses comes as concerns grow about the spread of a new variant discovered in South Africa. The Chinese leader stated that his country would donate 600 million doses directly, the other 400 million doses would be provided from investments in production sites. Vaccination rates in Africa are low when compared to the rest of the world, with many states relying on foreign donations due to the lack of local manufacturing facilities and prohibitive costs of mass purchases. According to the Chinese embassy in Dakar, Beijing invests heavily in Africa and is the continent's largest trading partner, with direct trade worth more than $200 billion in 2019. Last month, U.S. Vice President Joe Biden announced vaccine donations to Africa, promising the African Union with 17 million doses of the single-shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Due to the scale of its landing to developing countries in Africa and elsewhere, Beijing has frequently been accused of debt trap diplomacy, using its creditor status to extract diplomatic and commercial concessions. During a recent trip to Africa, Blinken made a reference to the accusations without explicitly naming China, saying in a speech in Nigeria that Africans have been wary of the strings that often accompany foreign engagements, which China on its behalf denies the allegations. At least 22 civilians were killed in an attack on internally displaced persons camp in the Democratic Republic of the Congo's northeast. The same camp in Uchiri province was attacked less than a week ago, killing 29 people. The armed group Cooperative for the Development of Congo has been accused of carrying out the attack on Evo camp on Sunday. The Ugandan military has announced joint and artillery raids against the Allied Democratic Forces ADF armed group with forces from neighboring Democratic Republic of the Congo. Ugandan authorities have blamed the IDF, which is affiliated with ISIS for earlier this month, deadly suicide bombing in the capital Kampala, in addition to thousands of attacks in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. Senegalese Foreign Minister Issa Talsal held talks with State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi in Dakar, hoping that China would lend support in the fight against insecurity in the conflict-ridden Sahel region at the start of China-Africa summit. Marwa Bilhewar, 
clarified. Senegalese foreign minister told reporters in Dakar after meeting with her Chinese counterpart Wang Yi that she hoped China would be a strong voice in the vast semi-arid regions fighting terrorism. Terrorists are active across much of the Sahara region, south of the Sahara Desert, fighting a long-running struggle despite the presence of French troops and United Union forces. Aisa Tassal made her remarks at the beginning of a China-Africa summit in Senegal, which is scheduled to focus on economic and security issues, and that will be over today. The program executive, the cooperation cultural. Executive Cultural Cooperation Program that the two parties have just stabilized will be signed at the two next session of the Great Joint Commission for the Cooperation between Senegal and China and will further boost our exchanges in all cultural subsectors. In other words, the Dakar Forum will be a great moment of meeting and exchange. It will be a privileged moment to strengthen cooperation between China and Africa through the economic, social and cultural potentials of African countries. The summit comes after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited Kenya, Nigeria and Senegal earlier this month, amid escalating rivalry between Beijing and Washington. According to the Chinese embassy in Dakar, China invests significantly in Africa and is the continent's largest trading partner, with direct trade worth more than $200 billion in 2019. Starting from today, the 30th of November, Barbados has completed its transition to a republican system of government, which marked the 55th anniversary of its independence from Britain. Barbados' head of state is no longer the British Queen. In her place, the tiny Caribbean island has its first elected president, Dame Sandra Masson, who represents the barbarian struggle for self-determination in Bridgetown. Barbadians have been preparing celebration for their new republic, with Prince Charles expected to deliver a speech stressing that war relations between the island and the UK would continue despite the constitutional change. U.S. President Joe Biden has called the Macron COVID-19 variant a cause of concern, but not a cause for panic. His statement comes a day after the new COVID-19 Macron was detected in the north of America. More details with our friend Nabil. In a speech at the White House, U.S. President Joe Biden called the new COVID-19 Omicron variant a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. This variant is a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. Biden added that the U.S. would face the new threat just as it has faced those that have come before it, urging everyone to get vaccinated and get their booster shots, saying it is the best protection against this new variant, as well as any other variants. Gives us time to take more actions, to move quicker, to make sure people understand you have to get your vaccine. You have to get the shot. You have to get the, get the booster if you're... The sooner or later, we're going to see cases of this new variant here in the United States. We'll have to face this new threat just as we face those that come before it. Asked about the decision to ban travels into the U.S. from South Africa and seven other African nations on Monday, Biden answered saying it was a step forward that gives the U.S. more time to respond to the new variant. I, 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 I don't think so. I don't think that's the, what's going to happen. And uh, I want to, again, the reason for the immediate travel ban is there were a significant number of cases, unlike any other country, well, there are few around South Africa in the world. We needed time to give people an opportunity to say, get that vaccination now before it heads. It's going to move around the world. Omicron raised concern between world leaders and people fear new lockdown measures will be imposed. However, restrictions are back amid the detection of Omicron in several cities around the world. We will require anyone who enters the UK to take a PCR test by the end of the second day after their arrival and to self-isolate until they have a negative result. The Omicron variant was the quickest to be labeled a variant of concern by the World Health Organization because of its seemingly fast spread in South Africa and its many troubling mutations. 
Reports from Bangladesh indicate that the first group of Rohingya refugees who fled persecution, or let me say the war in Myanmar, were arrested on an uninhabited island in the Bay of Bengal. About 1,500 people would be transferred from Cox Bazaar camp to Basanchar Island. Local media quoted prominent activist Jamalida Bagam as saying that refugees in the huge camp in Cox Bazaar are still living in fear since Malhabunin, a Rohingya leader, was killed last September. Thousands of migrants continue to wait in Belarus to enter the European Union through Poland, a crisis in the Central European country that has sharply divided its society between those who want to assist migrants and those who refuse to open their borders. Zara Furjani on what follow. UN's migration organization said Monday that up to 2,000 migrants and refugees have massed at the Belarusian-Polish border and an estimated 7,000 are currently in Belarus. Responding to the Belarusian EU border situation, the International Organization for Migration said it had increased their assistance for migrants and refugees, providing humanitarian aid at the border and intensifying voluntary return opportunities. The IOM, UN Refugee Agency and Belarus Red Cross have been granted access to the migrants and refugees at the border by the Belarusian authorities on several occasions in recent weeks, assessing the migrants' conditions and needs. International observers accused Polish leaders of choosing to ignore the humanitarian factor and focus only on the geopolitical conflict with Belarus and Russia. Poland and the Polish authorities are not viewing this only as a humanitarian crisis. The response has been very militarized and the language that is being used, it's a language of attack, war, hybrid war, conflict. They are also taking um, into account what is happening on the Russian-Ukrainian border. Um, where Russia has deployed 100,000 uh, soldiers and additional equipment. Since August, the EU countries bordering Belarus have reported a dramatically growing number of migrants. More than 8,000 people have tried to enter the bloc via the Belarus-EU border in 2021, up sharply from just 150 last year. Iran and world power resume nuclear talks for the first time in five months on Monday as diplomats try to solve the 2015 deal of the nuclear talks. EU envoy announced a positive vision about resuming the talks while Iran officials explained that making a new deal is impossible as long as the sanctions are. On the other hand, the West showed the fear of the Iranian investment in the nuclear bomb capabilities. On its behalf, the U.S. offered its ability to put more pressure on Iran if talks fail. The Pentagon will focus on building up bases in Guam and Australia to better prepare the U.S. military to counter China. According to a senior defense official, the moves have been prompted by the Department of Defense Global Posture Review, which President Joe Biden ordered Secretary of Defense Elliot Austin to undertake shortly after taking official in February. Austin started the Global Posture Posture Review in March. The review is classified, but a senior defense official provide some details about the review's findings. The foreign ministers of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization will meet today in the Latvian capital Riga to discuss issues on the organization agenda, on top of which are Russian military activities in the, in the Crimea. The media led by the U.S. Secretary of the State, Antony Blinken, will be attended by the Ukrainian foreign minister, Dimitrov Koluba, and Georgian David Zili, Zilikanya on the exceptional basis to discuss Russian activities. NATO's foreign ministers will discuss the alliance relations with Russia and the issues of Belarus, Afghanistan and Ukraine during their meeting in the Latvia capital of Riga. The meeting is expected to focus on tensions over Ukraine and NATO's strategy in the wake of its withdrawal from Afghanistan. The ministers will also discuss the migrant crisis in Belarus, which Western countries accuse the Belarusian authorities of having caused. In a joint press conference with Latvia President Eagles Levitz in Riga on Monday, NATO Secretary General Ian Stoltenberg called on Moscow to reduce tension and de-escalate amid reports confirming that Russia was bolstering its military presence at the Ukrainian border. 
This is the second time this year that Russia has, a, has amassed large and unusual concentration of forces in this region. We see heavy weapons, artillery, armored units, drones, and electronic warfare uh, systems, and tens of thousands of combat-ready troops. This military buildup is unprovoked and unexplained. It raises tensions and risk uh, miscalculation. Any future Russian aggression against Ukraine would come at a high price and have serious political and economic consequences for Russia. Last Friday, NATO Secretary General Ian Stoltenberg accused Russia of massing military forces near the border with Ukraine in an unusual manner, warning that Russia would pay a heavy price in the event of its incursion into Ukraine. Stoltenberg also accused Belarus saying it was exploiting immigrants to put pressure on NATO countries, especially Poland, Lithuania and Latvia. It is noteworthy that Russia has repeatedly stressed that the movement of Russian forces within the territory of Russia do not pose a threat to anyone. Left-wing opposition candidate Zamora Castro won, won, won Honduras presidential election, becoming the country's first female president and ending 12 years of consecutive and conservative rule by the National Party, which has been full of scandals linked to organized crime and cocaine smuggling. Zamora Castro is the wife of the former president Zelaya, who was overthrown by a coup in 2009 and leader of the left-wing Liberian Party. 16 top Arab national teams are taking off the FIFA Arab Cup, which will start today, Tuesday, out between the Haas, Qatar, and Bahrain. This tournament will be organized by the Football Federation FIFA for the first time in competition's history. Osama Yadi on what follow will explain. A total of 16 Arab strong national teams from the two continents, Africa and Asia are starting a severe competition in the Arab Cup which will kick off on Tuesday in Qatar. This tournament is the best preparation for the World Cup which is counting down to begin in 12 months from now. This will be the 10th edition of the competition and it will be organized by FIFA for the first time. Morocco is the defending champion as it won the competition in its previous edition which was hosted by Saudi Arabia in 2012. This competition is also an opportunity to discover the brand new stadiums built in Doha for the next World Cup, which will take place in Qatar in 2022. From a sports vision, the competition promises to be interesting and full of excitement and joy. Many Arab countries have proved their international level and the highly competitive teams such as Algeria, Morocco and Egypt. The most valuable Arab national teams are Morocco $239 million, Algeria $195 million and Tunisia $36 million. The most valuable player by trade value is the 29-year-old Egyptian player Mohamed Salah, who plays for Liverpool. He has a market value of $113 million. The average player age is 27 and the oldest player in the tournament is Jordan's player Mu'taz Yassin, as the youngest player is the Moroccan Sami Tlemceni, aged 17 years old. Qatar will open the tournament on Tuesday against Bahrain, while the tournament's top-ranked team in FIFA ranking in Tunisia will take the Mauritanian Morabitons. The Argentina superstar has once again for the seventh time been named the best player on the world, with Robert Lewandowski finishing as a runner-up, having been recognized as the best player on the planet for 2021. Messi is now two accomplishments clear of eternal rival Cristiano Ronaldo, with five time winner now at Manchester United, finishing outside of the top three for the first time since 2010. Mrs. Marvel, or let me say Miss Marvel, is an upcoming American television miniseries created by Bisha K. Ali for the streaming service Disney Plus. Based on the Marvel Comics character Kamala Khan, what's interesting is that it portrays a young teenager Muslim of Pakistani descent. The details with our mate Kaif Azad. We need new Ms. Marvel, a new miniseries featuring the very fast Muslim character from the eponymous comics. 
This is the 18th television series in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The six-episode first season is slated to air on Disney Plus sometime in summer 2022. A Muslim young teenager of color from Pakistan? That's a combination you don't see quite often in American cinema. Maybe Miss Marvel is a new kind of superhero. But at the core of all of it, her story is so universal. Miss Marvel is one of the newer characters in the Marvel comics. Santa Amanta, the comic book editor, spoke about the character of Miss Marvel on the late night with Seth Mayer show when it was just a comic book. When this character in particular, people came came up to me, came up to Willow, and they said, finally, we have a character out there, not just a superhero, but a character out there that we can connect with, and that my young daughter, my young son can aspire to become one day. You don't have to look a particular way to be powerful and to be a hero, and that's why it was so important. Now that it's turned into a miniseries, Santa Amanta, the executive producer, spoke about the casting process, which was so vast, and how they landed on Iman. Santa Amanta drew on her own experience experience in New Jersey as an American Muslim of Pakistani descent. Uh, the writer, G. Willow Wilson and myself, sort of went back and forth about who we wanted Kamala Khan to be, and it was very much about breaking stereotypes and about the idea of changing people's perceptions of Muslim Americans. But beyond that, we had a very universal approach about the concept of kind of re redefining yourself. I promised you'd be cool. I am cool. The casting process was vast. When we discovered Iman, we knew that she was Kamala Khan. It was unanimous decision. Yeah, I I can't comprehend this right now. The character of Kamala Khan, a teenage Pakistani-American girl living in New Jersey, is the first role of 16-year-old Canadian actress Iman Valani. Kamala Khan, a.k.a. Ms. Marvel, first appeared in August 2013 edition of Captain Marvel and later morphed into a full-fledged comic book series the following year. The teenager has the gift of polymorphism and elasticity, powers unleashed by the passage of a teratogenic cloud over a city. As child, she idolizes Captain Marvel, whom she saw with her own eyes, and is inspired by her own name of superheroine, Ms. Marvel. How lovely. It's such great to see a teenager Muslim take the lead in Hollywood industry. To this end, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a reminder for our main stories. United Nations expressed concern about isolating African nations of a macro variants, while the African president Cyril Ramaphosa called for easing of the restriction. <music> Myanmar called deferred an initial judgment in the trial disposed leader Aung San Suu to December. Starting from today, Nufamba Barbados has completed its transition to a republican system of government, which marked the 55th anniversary of its independence from Britain. That's all what we have got for now. See you at 6. Take care. Bye-bye.